Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May be we began this period of fasting, this great Lent, on Ash Wednesday. And we participated in a solemn remembrance that we are mortal, that we are going to eventually breathe our last breath here on this earth. And then last Sunday, the liturgy reminded us that we are in a great battle, a battle with evil, with Satan, and that we are being confronted every day of our lives with multiple temptations, moments of choice, where we will either choose for God or we will choose for that which is opposed to God, that we will either choose for God or we will choose for our own ego. There was a study made that indicates that people who make New Year's resolutions break them and give them up between one week and 10 days after January 1st. So we're just at that period right now that if, if you have made some some commitments for, for uh, Lent, that you might be at that point where you're getting a little hesitant about things. And so the church does something to help us. They give us the story of the transfiguration on Mount Tabor. We are brought up out of this season which is dominated by an awareness of death and an awareness of sin and we are now brought up to a, a the summit of human life where we remember that Jesus was transfigured in the presence of his inner circle of disciples Peter James and John It's as if the church in her wisdom realized that maybe at this point we needed a reminder of what the goal is. That that might be a, a source of encouragement to us as we, as we enter more deeply into uh, the great fast. We see Peter, he says, it's good for us to be here. Let's stay here. You know, and that's, that's what we'd like. All of us. You know, you have a wonderful experience uh, and you, you want to hold on to it. You want to keep going with it. Uh, we, you have a vacation. You're on vacation. You're having a good time. And, and then the days slip away and you realize that you're going back. And to the, the humdrum life. And you kind of wish, boy, I wish I could stay here just a few more days. But Jesus intimates to them, you gotta go down. You can't stay here. You can't stay at this, at this point. And so they depart from the mountain, and he tells them, don't talk about this to people until I have risen from the dead. From this point on in the lessons and the chance of the season of Great Lent, we're going to go deeper and deeper into the human experience. We're going to confront things like pain and loss, suffering and darkness, sorrow and death. We're going to get real about the human problem. God willing, we will become real about ourselves 
and what we need to do. But we're going to be confronting death and sorrow and pain and loss and suffering and darkness. We're going to be experiencing the reality of these, but in the light of the glory that was revealed on Mount Tabor. Being a Christian does not mean that everything is hunky-dory after you've accepted Jesus as your Savior and you've committed yourself to a life of discipleship. In fact, many times, actually, the decision to turn away from one's ego and to turn toward God brings on more problems, more temptations, more struggles, more challenges. And none of us are exempt to the pain of loss, to the sorrow and suffering that is part of the human experience to the ever-present reality that we are mortal, that we are going to die. And all of us, all of us in this room, no matter how charmed our life may have been at one time or another, we have all walked through the valley of the shadow of death. We have all been enveloped by the darkness that so often is the content of our experience. Just before they left the mountain, Jesus said uh, something very, very important that we need to hold on to as Christians, and that is he said to them, arise and fear not. Get on with it. You've had this wonderful experience now get on with the reality that you have to live your life, but don't be afraid. He didn't say, from now on everything is going to be great. Don't worry. This season of Lent is a, an opportunity for us to Recognize that God, the one who created this marvelous universe and created each one of us, that this God wants to go deeper into the human experience. He wants to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Many people make the mistake of thinking that we're doing all this stuff, fasting and special services and classes and stuff and pre-sanctified liturgies, and that we're doing all this because we're getting ready for the celebration of the resurrection. Well, we are. That is part of it. But the end of this deeper journey has a, has a stopping off point that is absolutely critical to understanding the message, the message of Christianity. And that is the cross. We're not going to get there. We're not going to get to the celebration without grappling with the reality of the cross. That life is, no matter how good it may be for an individual, life is filled with pain and loss and suffering and darkness and sorrow and death. And that we are told not to hide from these things, but we're told, get up and don't be afraid. You're going to face these things, but get on with it because you, you already know the end of the story. It is revealed right after Jesus said to them, I'm going to die. He takes them up on the mountain of 
Mount Tabor, and is transfigured before them. Kind of a guarantee, kind of a prefiguring that the end of the story isn't going to be the end. It's going to be the beginning. I ought to I ought to have stock in this book because I, I tell everybody you've got to if you have not read Saint Athanasius on, on the Incarnation you cannot claim to really be authentically an Orthodox Christian this is this is the message of the Church uh, by the by the great patriarch of Alexandria Athanasius the Great and he says in in this treatise on the on the section on the cross he says all these things the savior thought fit to do so that recognizing his bodily acts as the works of god men who were blind to his presence in creation might regain a knowledge of the father for as I said before, who that saw his authority over evil spirits and their response to it could doubt that he was indeed the Son, the wisdom and the power of God. Even the very creation broke silence at his behest and marvelous to relate, confessed with one voice before the cross, that monument of victory that he who suffered thereon in the body was not man only, but Son of God and Savior of all. The sun veiled his faith, face, the earth quaked, the mountains were rent asunder, and all men were stricken with awe. These things showed that Christ on the cross was God. These things showed that Christ on the cross were God and that all creation was his slave and was bearing witness by its fear to the presence of its master. Thus, when, the God, when God the Word revealed himself to men through his works, we must next consider the end of his earthly life and the nature of his bodily death. This is indeed the center of our faith. The end of the journey of Lent is at the foot of the cross. Jesus praying the high priestly prayer before his betrayal and eventual crucifixion prayed, Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all mankind, so that to all whom he hath given him, he may give eternal life. And this eternal life that they may know, you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work which you have given me to do, and now you, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world existed. The end of the Lenten journey is the glory of the cross. That is where we receive the clearest, most demonstrable evidence that we are loved. That God is willing to enter into the whole experience of human life, its ups and downs, its light, its darkness, its victory, its triumph, its defeats, its despair. He entered into all this that he might redeem it. That all the events of our life, whether they be good events or bad events, whether they be pleasurable events or painful events, that they all are part 
of his master work that he accomplished on the cross. Because the deeper we, the deeper God goes and the deeper we are willing to follow him, the higher we will rise. That is the promise of Lent. That is the promise of the gospel. That is the promise of the church. That is the very essence of Christianity. We want to see the glory. We want to experience it. But we will only experience it in and through the cross. So Jesus didn't just do something for us and then let it be and say, I've done it, I carried my cross, I suffered, everything's okay. No, he said, take up your cross. Take up your cross and follow me. Follow after me. Imitate me. Live life as I lived life. And if we're willing to do that, then the crosses of our life, the moments of darkness, the, the moments of despair, the moments of loss can be moments of glory. Because the wounds that we carry, because we are Christians, are not the sign that we have been damaged. They are the sign that we have been victorious. Jesus showed his hands and his feet to his disciples because they were the sign that he had gone to the nth degree to convince us of his love. And, and the wounds that we carry in our own lives are the manifestation of the quality of our love for him. So if you're getting a little teetery about Lent and, oh boy, I wish I could have a steak. I mean, that's, that's how, you know, we're no different than the Israelites wandering in the wilderness. Can you believe these people? They lived in, they lived in slavery and now they're complaining about not having cucumbers. I mean, give me a break, but that's human nature, you know? But if you're getting a little teetery about, oh man, I wish it just would get to be Easter, you know? Uh, we're going to go to the mountaintop today and we're going to experience God's Christ glory as we receive him into our very lives and that's going to give us the strength and the courage to go forward because he is willing to give himself to us today we are going to be able to arise and not be afraid and to see this journey to its end which in a surprising and wondrous way will not be defeat, but will be an unbelievable victory that has been won for us. Amen.